Romans this morning. We're not going to actually be in Romans too much, but uh, we are going to be looking back at some things we looked at last week. It's good to have Brother Maurer and his wife with us down from Pennsylvania. Amen. Still in Pennsylvania. And Brother Jim back this morning. Good to see you folks. Welcome. I know Jeannie's got a friend with her this morning. Welcome. If we missed anybody, forgive me. If you didn't get a visitor's card, why get one before you leave this morning and have take a minute, fill it out, drop it in the offering plate. Uh, the weather changes in Texas quickly, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. Yep. Wash your car, it will rain, guaranteed. So, <clears throat> be praying for those folks east of southeast of Dallas. Uh, tornado damage. I think there's a lot of injuries up there, and uh, I know God is good, and God watches over His folks. But uh, there are going to be trials sometimes and things that you can't control. And the uh, best I can say is, is, is ask God for a special grace, of, special dose of his divine grace. Uh, we're uh, looking at spiritual growth. <clears throat> Those of you that have reared children uh, are still in the process of rearing children. They were, uh, speaking from a little bit of experience, there's certain levels of growth you look for in your kiddos as they're coming along. And I'm going to set aside the spiritual part just for a minute. But uh, you know, in elementary school, there were certain expectations. There were certain things that you as parents, or we as parents, understood that that's just the way it is, in a sense, in elementary. Kids will be kids. Amen. And then middle school, and, and, and then on into high school. But what you're looking for as parents is a, an eventual shift in the thinking, a shift in their attitude. A, a moving on from the immature to the mature. Um, in particular, <clears throat> excuse me, after high school, you expect uh, a bigger change with them. And you look for a change. You look for changes. And, and if you want to shift over to the spiritual side of things, you're looking for that same thing. When they say they're saved, you're looking for spiritual growth. You're looking for, oh, something. Amen. <laughs> Please grow up at some point. Amen. But you're looking for, for growth. You're looking for, for, a, for a change in attitude, for a change. And rather than now asking dad, mom, how to do something, you're hoping that they're asking their heavenly father. You look for that change in the house of God with, with kiddos. There's a way children act when they're younger and so on. They get out of high school and into the college years. You expect certain behavior out of them. You shouldn't have to ask. You shouldn't have to demand. Parents, uh, I realize they don't come trained, but there comes a point where children eventually become young men and young women. And, and in a sense, you, you can only do so much as parents, but at that point you're praying that, that things have kind of grabbed a hold of their heart and that, that ultimately God has and that God's, God is the one that's giving them the primary direction and strength and comfort and inspiration in their life. Now Christian, you first got saved, there's some things in your life perhaps that, that you were involved in that, that God spoke to your heart and said, look, uh, this isn't good, let's, let's take care of this, amen. And you'll find that after a while, uh, uh, through the, your study of the Word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit and your time you spend in prayer that God deals with and has dealt with your heart about a lot of things in your life. God wants his children to grow up. Uh, at some point, God wants us to set aside the immature and put on the mature, to set aside the old and put on the new. There ought to, have, there ought to come a point in a Christian's life that they're... they're not spending time in the Word of God, not ten spending time in the house of the Lord, not spending time in prayer ought to bother God's children at some point. Now, if you look with me in Romans chapter 12, <clears throat> just by way of brief review this morning, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now you hold on to that thought, and you may recall these verses from last week. 
Ephesians chapter 4, the book of Ephesians chapter 4, by way of brief review, if you'll turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, Ephesians 4, 22, that she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to deceitful lust, and look in verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now you want to reinforce Ephesians 4 there, look with me in the book of Colossians chapter 3. The book of Colossians chapter 3. We'll not read the entire chapter, but look at verses 8 through 10 with me. Colossians 3 verse 8 tells us, But now ye also put off all these. God wants us to set aside some things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on, look here, the new man which is renewed, how? In knowledge after the image of him that created him. Again, you've got the putting off of the old and the putting on of the new. Now, since last Sunday's lesson in this matter of spiritual growth, I don't recall if I challenged you, I'm getting older and forgetful, that there's something in your life that's not right with your heavenly father, and you know it's not right, that you, I'll throw one out, maybe you have anger management issues. Amen? You're short-fused. Well, that's just the way I am, Brother Doug. Oh, please. Amen? God's greater than that, okay? Don't be satisfied with this, well, that's just the way I am, and you have to like it. No, God doesn't have to like it, but God will help you with it. So this matter of putting off and putting on the new, is there something in your life this morning, be careful who I look at, <laughs> amen, that God wants you to put off? God wants you to take care of. But I've been saved, Brother Doug, for 25 years. Really? But you don't act like it. Perhaps there's something in your heart and life God wants you to get rid of or set aside. Maybe at your age this morning, spiritually, you're spiritually immature. Amen? Overall, God wants you to grow up. So whether it's anger management, whether it's a covetous spirit, whether it's pride, whether it's an unforgiving spirit, you have, you have a desperate time being merciful and forgiving amen God wants you to set those things aside maybe just simply being kind it's not <laughs> I've learned a few things a few things amen uh, if you really want to show some of you you're not happy just just turn the other way and don't say hi amen now please grow up amen this is adult Sunday school class God wants us to be kind one to another God wants oh, oh here it comes we're supposed to love one another. Amen. Yep. Even if you don't feel like it. So here's my question to you this morning. What is it in your life? <clears throat> Please don't share it with me. Amen. I'm struggling with that praying one for another thing. Amen. But is there something in your life this morning God wants you to put off? You know God wants you to set aside. But you struggle with it. Put that down. Amen. And look and, look, and pay attention to the lesson again this morning. See if God can help you help me with my issues. Amen. Because you'll find here in the book of Colossians, again, he wants you to put off. He lists a few things here. Amen. But he also wants you to put on anew. And you'll find in the book of Galatians, if you turn with, with me back to Galatians, this is what we kind of want to have evident in our life as a Christian. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. This is the fruit of... Christian this morning. This is the fruit that ought to be evidence in our life. And, but look what it starts off with in Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, oh boy, love. You should know they're a Christian by their love. Ha, huh? amen? <laughs> look, look at this list here. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace amen, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness tempers against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us put into application those things that we've learned. 
Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And if you turn me to first, second Peter chapter one, boy, that's a long list, brother Doug. Well, it's kind of like a report card check, isn't it? In second Peter chapter one, In 2 Peter chapter 1, look at these verses with me again here. In verse 5, in 2 Peter chapter 1, beside this, giving all diligence, uh -uh, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, oh, oh, charity. Now, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the struggle I mentioned last week with this putting off and putting on is I have a way of slipping into I'm going to deal with it. Okay? Do I have company here this morning? I'm going to handle this. Now, let me submit for your consideration your attitude makes a huge difference in putting off something. Ronnie, you have to recognize you have something that needs to be put off. If I simply can't be kind to God's people on a Sunday morning, what's the rest of my week like? <gasps> now, come on. We show a little bit of glimpse of our little personality sometimes. We may not think anybody's paying attention. But if you're half paying attention to folks and people, I can almost get a little glimpse into the, what the rest of your week perhaps is like. If you can't be kind to one another on a Sunday morning, what is the rest of the week like? A train wreck, probably, amen? Come on, right? But we give each other little glimpses sometimes. We're short, we're impatient sometimes, we don't want to speak to somebody, we simply can't be kind. And love, that would, that would raise the question, I wonder how the love factor's going in their life, amen? Think with me just for a minute here. God wants us to grow up. I struggle with things in my life, and one thing I've learned is I've got to do the work. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to be more loving. I'm going to be more merciful. Ha, by Monday morning at 9 o'clock, it's all run out of the hourglass. Amen? Now, my attitude is right. I want to improve. I want to grow spiritually. Amen? I would hope, for those of you that have been coming to Sunday school and church for years, there is a certain mentality of, What's in it this morning that I need from the Lord? I need from the Lord to, to grow, to mature, to be a better Christian, to be better used of God. And then, then, Lord, help me to make application. But think with me this morning. If you look with me in Philippians chapter 1, God has to remind me on a regular basis that it's, it's, it's he that does the work. In Philippians chapter 1, look with me at this, at this verse, if you would, please. Philippians chapter 1. I struggle with this. I struggle with issues in my life. I'm struggling with issues this morning. Yeah, but you're teaching the, the Sunday school. No, I hope God is. But I struggle with things even here in church. Amen? With having a right attitude. With learning how to focus. With learning how to discipline the old nature. To listen. Amen? To, to even at 55 be the right example for a younger generation coming up. Amen? Look what Philippians 1 verse 6 says. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, Christian, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What made the Apostle Paul seem to be almost a super Christian? What? Was it the Apostle Paul? I think he had the right attitude. I think God used his intellect. I think God used his drive. Amen. You look with me in Philippians 4, we've looked at this also. This verse is quoted all the time, amen. It's, I mentioned it's on a lot of our walls at home. Philippians 4, verse number 13. Look what this verse tells us. I can do all things through who? Christ, which what? Which strengtheneth me. Do you believe that this morning? Well, sometimes. Because here's the part I struggle with. I know this verse. I love this verse, but I forget what the verse says. I can do all things through, hello, amen. God has to remind me, hey, that lesson that I took you through last week in a matter of being patient, 
we're back to the classroom again this morning. Amen. And okay, thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace and his patience with each of us. God will take us back to that classroom and say, let's go through this lesson one more time. Amen. You missed something last week. Understand who's doing the work and understand how God performs this work. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, by way of review again, 1 Peter chapter 2, God in this matter of spiritual growth in each of our lives works in a number of different ways. The first, foremost, and most important is what's right in front of you this morning. What is that? The word of God. You do have it with you this morning, amen, right? Or at least you're looking on. See, it's not my words. I'm not going to make the change, amen? It's the word of God that's going to affect your heart and life. Why? It's quick and sharp and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Look here in Second Peter, or 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. This matter of putting off the old and found in verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, what? That she may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Do you remember when you first were saved, first got saved, things of God were exciting? Amen. I couldn't get up to the house of God quick enough as a young Christian. I couldn't get enough Bible teaching. We had pastor's class back when I was a young man on a Tuesday night, and that was fulfilling another area of Bible study, which I loved dearly. Amen. And then it was the church services, and that was your own devotional time. But there came a point in my life where, well, I think I've got it. And what happens is you start to set the word of God aside. And this, listen, this may be redundant to some of us, but it's elementary. It's Christianity 101. The key here was found in verse two. The key to verse one in this chapter is found in verse two. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that what? That you may grow thereby. If you're having and struggling with issues in your life this morning, you know are not right with your heavenly father. You know you're saved. But the Holy Spirit of God has been pricking and stirring your heart. I can just about, now we're not going to bring gambling in this. That's not a good thing. I was going to say, I can just about bet that you haven't been in the word of God. Yeah, yes, I have, Brother Doug. Okay, here's my next question. It's one thing to read the word of God and go through the motions. And I'll say, do that. Amen. Till God grips your heart. But it's another thing to get in the word of God and yield to what God's speaking to your heart about. I can know what I should do. But you know where the, where the real rubber hits the road when the lesson's gotten through to the heart is it's follow-up. Talk's cheap. Prove it. Amen? Amen? After a while, it's like, I can trace to the root of a lot of my issues with just simply being out of the word of God. Even teaching an adult Sunday school class does not mean that Brother Doug's in the Bible all week. He should be, but he slacks off sometimes. How about yourselves? Amen? Another area that God works in, look with me in the book of Philippians chapter 4. There is no substitute for the word of God. Folks, if you're not in the Bible, I don't mean to sound like a nag this morning. Uh, but if that's, amen, get in the word of God. I challenge you to set up your devotional study, your own, amen. Maybe you're challenged with the book of Romans we've been in, or maybe Philippians. And, however, get in the word of God and ask God to show you things from it. In, in Philippians chapter four, look with me here in verse number four, it says rejoice in the Lord Awe. And again, I say rejoice, quit your complaining. If you're saved this morning, rejoice, Amen. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Why, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Quit your fretting and worrying. If the news causes anxiety in your heart and life, turn it off. Amen? Yeah, it's just you don't have to be glued to the radio or the television set to find out everything going on around you. Get into the word of God. Spend some time with your heavenly father. Said, so be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
There's no substitute for the word of God, but folks, there's no substitute for spending time with your heavenly father in prayer. Ask yourself this question in an area that you're struggling with. Have you even asked God for help with it? Silence, dead silence. Amen. There's times I don't. It's nothing but the good old pride in my heart says, well, I'll handle this, Lord, in my timing, in my way. God would like to hear from us. If you're struggling with an area of just simply being kind or you have an unforgiving spirit and you know that and you haven't asked God for help with it, well, why not? He's able to solve any problem. That which you're struggling with this morning, God can help you with it. Here's what's, here's what's neat about being under grace and serving our Heavenly Father is he wants to help you with it. Amen. He, his desire is to help you with it. He wants his children to grow up. And he, again, rear children, there's things they struggle with and then they don't, they never come and ask you about it. Amen. Right? But you'd sure like to step in there and, and help, but nothing's ever asked. Amen. Listen, it's the same way with our Heavenly Father. He knows all about that struggle you're having. He knows all about what you're dealing with. Amen. Ask. Pray about it. Take it to God in prayer. Lord, help me, to, help me to grow up in this area. Help me to set this off. I'm struggling with it. <sighs> Hebrews chapter 12. This matter of God working in our lives and helping us to grow spiritually. Anybody ever get a... Oh dear, don't raise your hand. Did anybody ever get a, pat, a paddling growing up? Go select your willow switch. Oh, come on, seriously? Get the driest one that cracked right away. That was the key. Amen? <laughs> but you know something about that spanking or paddling? You remembered if it was a good one. Amen? You, you remembered, but what, <laughs> what a bunch, amen. <laughs> we got to have a show of hands. Did anybody not get spanked? <laughs> that explains things. Now I don't even have to go any further, amen? Spoiled brat, right? There's something about that, though. They got to a certain age where, okay, everybody's a little different. All right. Not everybody. Uh, any, uh, sometimes you just have to look. And that's all it takes. Amen. But some of us, if we were honest with ourselves, don't get the message. <laughs> in Hebrews chapter 12, if you look with me here in verse 5. You mean God used can use chastening in our life to help us get on. Yeah, look here. In Hebrews 12, verse 5, it says, uh, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. But... For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers and are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. Look here what it says here. But he for our profit. Why? That we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth, look here, the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Sometimes, I'll say this very carefully, God has to take his kiddos to the woodshed. It's as simple as that. Sometimes we're just hard-headed and we're not going to listen. Amen? 
Oh, we have a way of showing it. We did with our parents, amen? And we do it inside sometimes to our Heavenly Father. No, I'm not going to listen. We're telling him that sometimes more often than we should be. And God says, fine. <laughs> I can wait. Amen. And then sometimes the Lord says, you know what? No, it's, it's time to have a, 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 a closer discussion about the situation. Amen. And God will chasten us different ways. Amen. To get our attention, to help us look here. I like how this is put here in verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, look here, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. I don't think God takes any joy in taking his children to the woodshed, so to speak. I don't know any parent here that takes great joy in grabbing a paddle or whatever and, 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 and giving the kiddos a... Uh, a um, a lesson in life. Amen. I don't know of any parent that thinks that's just delightful and joyful. Amen. And I don't believe our Heavenly Father takes great joy in it either. But sometimes we need a lesson. How does God help us to grow? First and foremost of most importance is his word. Amen. If you're not in the word of God, I, I challenge you to get in the word of God. Uh, the second I think God uh, helps us in the area is, is asking God, communicating with our Heavenly Father in the area of prayer, recognizing there's some things in our life that need work. Third, third here, uh, I believe God does use chastening in our life. If we can't get the message, God's going to help us that way too. It's for our betterment. Amen. Yep. But here's another one. He's going to bring trials. He's going to bring tribulations in your life and you're not going to understand it at the time. But look with me and if you would please in Romans chapter 5, very quickly here, Romans 5, the book of Romans 5, and we're about out of time, but Romans 5, look at Romans 5 here in verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. How can that be? Well, you've got to know some things. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. God is trying to grow his children up. He's going to allow some trials and tribulations in your heart and life that you're not going to understand at the time. In fact, you may not understand some of it until years later when you look back and go, oh, I get it now. God is trying to work on my heart and life in an area and try to grow me some, amen? See, sometimes some of us have gone through, through some things others cannot relate to. But God will bring those paths across each other, I think, in the area of comfort. If you ever had a child down at the hospital down there, you don't understand why, amen, at the time, okay? But later on, you can certainly be used of God to be, now listen to me, to the Lord, I pray. You can be used of God to be a comfort to somebody else going through that same thing. Amen. You didn't understand it at the time, but God, okay. Uh, I think of, I haven't gone through what they just went through east of Dallas. Well, you mean God brought that into their life? Listen, I don't have an answer to everything, okay. But if you're saved, amen, I think there's some things that come out of that you go, Praise God, I'm, I, he protected the family. The house can be rebuilt, amen. It could have been worse or et cetera, but God's gonna allow some things you're not gonna understand at the time. But if you're close to your heavenly father, you trust him and you move on. And in, in time, God shows you some things. But look with me in the book of James chapter, chapter one. The book of James chapter one, also in this matter of trials and tribulations. James chapter one. In James chapter 1, verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, underline that, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, it works some things, it worketh patience. But the key here in verse 4, but let 
patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Here's the problem you get into sometimes when God brings trials into your life or tribulations is we don't always like it. We don't always understand it. Now let me challenge you with this. The key in, in, in James here is, but let patience have her perfect work. Learn to yield to the working of God in your life. Learn to, I may not understand it, Lord, but I know you have best interests in mind. All to your honor and glory, Lord, just help me to do right. I don't understand why this is happening. Amen. Paul went through many, many, many trials. Many, if you study the life of Paul. I don't think Paul always understood but he knew God had his best interest in mind and God had a plan for Paul and to use Paul in a mighty and special way. You know, no sort, I, I think of that situation up there in Dallas. God help us. I've seen tornadoes from a distance, haven't been in the middle of one. Amen. I, we used to think it was fun running out with the camera on the farm, photographing the tornadoes going by on each side. That was really cool as a kid. Didn't understand the damage those things do and, and, and the loss of life and property. But you know what? You can be an encouragement. To, you, I, I look at this. I'd hope I could be an encouragement to my neighbor. I could be a help to my neighbor. I can be a source of comfort and direct them to the greatest source of comfort there is. I mean, that I would be a testimony and a witness for the honor and glory of God. That's how I pray I would treat the situation. Amen? So God's going to allow some things. And, and what God's looking for in his children is simply yielding. Yielding. You may not understand it, but God says, look, just... just Come on, take my hand and let's go. I'll show you some things later, but I just yield. Amen. Do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Do what you can do. Learn to yield to the working of the Holy Spirit of God in your heart and life. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Look with me in Philippians 1 with Paul. Look with me back in Philippians chapter 1 with the Apostle Paul here. Let's look at this very quickly here. In Philippians chapter 1, reading in verse 12 and following. Philippians 1, verse 12. Find your place. So this is important regarding uh, things going on in Paul's life and his handling of them. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather under the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and all other places. And think with me just for a minute. Paul looks at this as those things that happened to me God used to promote the gospel. I look at it, praise God I could be used of the Lord in this capacity for the furtherance of the gospel. Even if it ends up being a jail ministry. Guess what? I've got a captive audience. Amen? Yes. Those things which you... Look, understand fellow brothers and sisters. This is not a problem in my life, Paul's saying. God's used this in my life to further the gospel. And what's more, if you look in here in verse number 14, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Look, if Paul can go through this with a great spirit and a good attitude, and it hasn't slowed him down one bit for the cause of Christ, hey, maybe I can do it too. Amen? Paul was an encouragement to those that were watching. He was an encouragement that, hey, Paul didn't just quit. Paul didn't pack his tent up and go, well, I quit. If this is the way the ministry is going to be, I quit. Amen. I can only think of what some pastors go through sometimes. Amen. Can you imagine the first storm? Amen. You just pack it up and go home. No. There's going to be many storms. Amen. Yeah. But after a while, you learn to weather the storms by the grace of God. And Paul said here, look here. Verse 12 again, I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather under the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace, in all their places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation, my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, 
whether it be by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. God's going to bring some things in your life, folks. Amen. It's a matter of spiritual growth. And sometimes he's going to take you back to that classroom and bring it again. Folks, we're out of time this morning, but I'm going to challenge you. Think about a couple of things here in closing. Understand who's doing the work. God. Understand how God does the work in spiritual growth. The word of God. Get in some time in prayer with your heavenly father. If you don't, he's going to bring chastening in your life, trials and tribulations. And one more thought here in this matter of spiritual growth. Folks, we can encourage, we can exhort, we can minister, and we can pray for one another. Amen. We're out of time this morning. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. I trust the scriptures have been a blessing to you. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the privilege of being here this morning. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the word of God. Help us be students of it. May your hand be upon our pastor. May your hand be upon the service to follow. May Christ, Lord, have the chief seat. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you to know and do his will today. God bless you each for being here this morning.